Thanks, Ms. Melito. Um, next, we're going to have uh, Mike Mittler, who's the co-owner of Mittler Brothers Machine and Tool, located in Wright City, Missouri. Uh, the company manufactures tools commonly used in auto racing and, and the aviation industry. Uh, Mr. Mittler started his business 30 years ago with his brother Paul, and it remains a uh, family-run uh, business. Uh, Mr. Mittler, thanks for being here. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you, Chairman Graves and Ranking Member Velasquez, members of the committee. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. My name, as you said, Mike Mittler, President and Co-Founder, Mittler Brothers Machine and Tool. We're located in Wright City, Missouri. My brother and I founded the company in 1980 in a 2,500-square-foot wreck, wreck of a rented building with just Paul and I as the only employees to start with. We started with an idea and a commitment to hard work, and now 30 years later, we have 60 employees and a diversified business, including a product line of metal fabricating uh, tools serving the auto racing, hot rodding, and aviation market. Our job shop customers are leading companies in their industry, including building products, energy, automotive, and industrial lasers. We have a mix of both senior and junior employees, including my brother Paul's daughter, our second generation working in our plant. Our average tenure is over 10 years, including nine employees with over 20 years of service. We have two other sets of brothers, and one husband and wife team working for us, making us very much a family operation. There are only three very simple rules at Mittler Brothers. Safety, quality, productivity, no exceptions. We are proud to have over a five-year record of no lost time accident in our plant, which exemplifies our commitment to safety. In 30 years of business, we continue to meet and exceed federal workplace standards. We do this not because we are forced by federal regulators, but because as a small business, our employees are our family, and it is just the right thing to do. Just like the millions of small business owners like us, we know that a safe and happy work environment leads to a productive and profitable company. In the past 31 years, OSHA has come into our shop twice on campaigns aimed at our industry. Both times when minor infractions were found, we immediately took steps to correct those and work with the agency inspector to ensure full compliance. Historically, manufacturing businesses in our industries maintain good working relationship with inspectors and regulators with OSHA, the NLRB, EPA, and others. Our trade industry groups, such as the National Tooling and Machining Association, which I chaired in 2006, worked for years with various agencies to help set and monitor industry safety standards. However, the past few years, we have noticed a significant shift in the way federal regulators approach their relationship with manufacturers. It feels like we have moved from an environment of cooperation to one where agencies have a gotcha attitude. In the past, an inspector would visit your shop and work with us to correct any unintended violations. Today, they fine you first and take no questions later. In the past several months, the NLRB issued a string of decisions and complaints with broad implications for employer-employee relationship. For example, the decision against Boeing Company, as the chairman noted, has the federal government targeting a private business to choose for increasing manufacturing employment and production at one of their facilities. How does that look when we're trying to strengthen manufacturing in America so we, small suppliers, can still have customers? Recently, the NLRB expanded a requirement mandating that all private employers must place a poster in their businesses notifying employees of their rights under the NLRA to join a union. It continues to astound me when the government takes the approach that the only way to a better, safer, and happier work environment is to join a union. For small business, it is quite the opposite. Employees have the freedom and flexibility to be partners with the owners and to get the job done right and get it done fast. Add the poster rule to the new quick election process the NLRB is imposing, and you begin to create a more hostile work environment where employees and employers no longer feel they can openly communicate. In addition to the direct impact the NLRB has on my company, it is a greater impact to my customers. If those larger manufacturers for whom my employees make parts close their doors due to a hostile environment for manufacturing companies, all the families at Mittler Brothers will suffer. We are hopeful the administration uh, was taking a new approach to regulations when the president in January 2011 issued an executive order requiring all agencies to conduct a full review of the impact and effectiveness of new regulations. Since then, the administration has withdrawn new regulations 
from OSHA requiring businesses to implement new noise canceling equipment if they were feasible or capable of being done, regardless of their effectiveness. They put on hold new EPA regulations. There may yet be some signs that Washington might revert to a culture of cooperation with employers. Unfortunately, it seems the NLRB missed the President's memo. I came to Washington today because I want to fight for my employees and my company. I came here today because I thought it was important that policymakers in Washington understand how small businesses work and the excellent relationship we have with our employees. We are local small businesses who seek local solutions in a community where we often have multiple generations working at the same manufacturing plant. At a time when manufacturing is leading the way for our economic recovery, we need Washington to make us more globally competitive, to promote a positive workplace, and to strengthen manufacturing in America. The latest actions by the NLRB do the opposite and will create animosity in the workplace without helping those we seek to support our employees. Thank you for the opportunity to present testimony today. I look forward to continuing to work with this committee as I have in the past on issues from supporting automotive suppliers and workforce training to the regulatory burden on small business. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mittler.